So in this problem, we are going to find how many bit strings of length n can be formed with no two consecutive zeros. And we want to set up a recurrence relation for this particular problem. So what we will do is we will let a n be equal to the number of bit strings of length n with no two consecutive zeros anywhere in the string. So in the string, the two consecutive zeros should not be seen anywhere. Okay, so I will assume that suppose this is a bit string, which is of length n, I will draw a length n sequence. And these are the places of the string. I will write down the places here. So the place, and this is the string. So this is the first place, second place, third place, and so on. This is the nth place. This is the n minus one place. This is the n minus two place, and so on. So now we want, we don't want that two consecutive zeros should occur in in this string at all. So we don't want such things to happen, right? Now, if you uh, really look at the last digit, the last digit has two choices in the last digit you can have either zero or you can have one okay so i will split the last digit into two cases so either the last digit is zero or the last digit is one so if the last digit is zero the string will basically start looking in this fashion The second string will start look uh, appear in this fashion. So now in the if we observe the first string now here you have zero. So if you do not want consecutive zeros, what should happen in the previous digit, the previous digit, this place digit, this place digit cannot be zero. And in that case, this digit has to be equal to one. So you do not have any choice over there. So the n minus one digit has to be equal to one. Now, if you look at the previous n minus two digits, now the previous n minus two digits, there are two raised to n ways to choose the, the digits in each place. But what will happen? But um, but in that case, the, the, the sequences with consecutive zeros will also start appearing in this particular n minus so for example one zero 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 can also appear in this case but in the in that case this is not valid because we do not want what we do not want consecutive digits to appear in the places so how many ways are there to choose a sequence which is of length n minus two which is not having what which is not having consecutive Two zeros. So we know that if you have a bit string of length n, okay, then uh, uh, if you have a bit string of length n which does not have two consecutive zeros, then the number of uh, such strings is a n. So what we want here is we want an n minus two length bit string which is not having consecutive two zeros. So how many number of ways are there? So this can be done in how many ways? This can be done in a n minus two number of ways are there. Now, now we will switch to the second case. Now, if the last digit is one, the previous n minus one digits can be anything, but consecutive zeros should not appear. Now, how many digits are there in the place? There are n minus one digits we have, and the consecutive zeros should not occur. Occur. So, how? So, what is the number of ways in which a bit string of length n minus one with no consecutive zeros appears? That can be done in how many number of ways? That can be done in a n minus one number of ways. So, this means that our total number of ways in for string of length n, a n will become equal to how much? a n will become a n minus one or means plus a n minus, sorry, a n minus two plus a n minus one. Okay. This is the recurrence relation. Now we want to just identify what? We want to identify the initial condition. Okay. So what is the in initial condition here? Here, if you have a string of uh, length 
we will not talk about strings of length one because in that case consecutive zeros uh, two zeros case will not appear so we will directly start with a string of length two what is the string of length two uh, will have will be actually what is a2 i mean i want to find what is a2 what what is the meaning of a2 how many strings of length two are there which do not have consecutive two zeros now if you take a string of length two string of length two is either zero zero it is either one zero it is either zero one or it is what it is one one in which this case is not allowed so in in the in this two length string you can either have one zero you can have zero one or you can have one one so how many strings you got we got three strings of length two which do not have consecutive two zeros so what is the value of a2 the value of a2 will be how much the value of a2 will be equal to three because you got three strings what is meaning of a2 how many strings of length two do you find which do not have consecutive two zeros so the answer to that question is we could find three strings which do not have consecutive two zeros so that now the recurrence relation is actually complete that a2 is equal to three and can we write one more one more initial condition let me write one more initial condition for this particular problem so if i look at strings i'm sorry if i look at strings of length three now what are the strings of length three let us write the strings of length three strings of length three are zero 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 then zero i will write it in this fashion you all know this I will write zero zero one one zero zero one one and then zero one zero one zero one zero one. Okay, so these are eight strings total. Okay, of length three, and I will omit the strings which are having consecutive two zeros. So what are the strings which are having consecutive two zeros? This string will go away. Zero 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 will go away. because it have it has two zeros consecutive second string will also go away then the fifth string is also out because it has one zero zero so how many strings are we left with we are left with five strings which are having no consecutive zeros so here in a3 i will uh, i will write how much a3 i will write Five and a two I will write what a two I will write three so the initial conditions are a two is equal to three and a three is equal to five okay now it is uh, as per our habit now why do we need two initial conditions to write this particular problem because if I want to calculate if I want to calculate a four I must have the value of what I must have the value of a three and a two otherwise I will not be able to find the fourth term. i have the value of a2 and a3 so using a2 and a3 i will be able to find the fourth term if i do not find this initial condition a3 in that case what will happen i will not be able to find the fourth term because fourth term depends on what because the a4 formula depends on a2 plus a3 if you don't know what is a3 how will you find a4 that is why we have found out two initial conditions for this particular problem 